All right, so uh, let's go ahead and let's see about wrapping this stuff up. Now, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start to apply the uh, Turbo Smooth modifier to everything. And we're going to start to create the effect of seams on furniture and on the actual fabric. Normally, you would leave that for texturing. But I'm going to show you a, a simple technique to create some uh, very simple to make details that from a distance makes it look like the furniture has actual uh, seams or hems that, you know, attach the fabric together the way it will look in real life. But uh, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start to rename some of this stuff just to keep stuff organized. So let me take the back cushion here. I'm going to call that um, cushion backrest. I'm going to call this one cushion seat. This one be armrest. This one I'm going to call sofa base. And this one the front will be called sofa front end, I guess, for lack of a better name. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to apply the uh, turbo smooth to all this stuff. I'm going to take the symmetry modifier, don't need it anymore, so I'll delete it. And what I'll do is first I'm going to turn NERMS toggle off on all of this stuff. Make sure you turn off the NERMS toggle before you add any modifiers to this. Okay, all right, so there we go. So this is the base low res shape of this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. Come up to modifiers, go to subdivision surfaces, and add a turbo smooth. And what that's going to do, it's going to in one shot drop a turbo smooth modifier on everything. But you're going to notice something. If I select any of these objects, the turbo smooth modifier's name is in italics. It's in italics. Um, what that tells you is that right now the modifier is in instance mode. What that means is that all the modifiers are sharing the same properties. And the way you can see that easily is if I come over here to the iterations on any of these objects and I change it to 2, you'll notice that all the objects increase their turbo smooth iterations to 2. And they'll all go to 3, they'll all go to 0, they'll all go to 1. They're all sharing the same exact turbo smooth modifier. Sometimes this can be helpful and handy if you want to just control everything with a single modifier. In my case, however, I don't want that. I want to have control of each individual object um, on a per object basis. So what I'm going to do is every time I edit an object, I'm going to right click on the Turbo Smooth and I'm going to go ahead and select the option that says Make Unique. When I do that, you notice that it's no longer in italics. And now what happens is I can adjust the iterations independently of any other object in the scene. Okay, So just very important there to, to make a note of that. If you're not aware of that, it might catch you off guard. So let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take the uh, base geometry here. And you notice the base geometry that we have, the edges, subdivisions, stuff like that. I'm going to make that modifier unique. I'm going to give this about maybe two iterations. Mm, or should I go with three? Let me see. Probably just going to go with, um, with two to make this a little bit easier. Yeah, two iterations looks pretty good. Okay. Now, after I give this thing two iterations, the Turbo Smooth, I'm done with it. It already did its job for the moment. So I'm going to collapse that, convert this back into an editable poly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this, and I don't have any reference image for this, but just using human common sense, I'm going to assume that there's going to be a seam right here in this edge loop, and maybe another one in this edge loop over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this edge loop that's right here, okay? And I'm going to use the chamfer tool. I'm going to make a small chamfer. I'm going to turn on Nerm's toggle as well. See, I get myself a small little uh, chamfer right here. I can't really zoom in much closer. Actually, yes, I can. Okay? I'm going to make a chamfer of about maybe 0 0.02 like this, okay? Now if we look at our image, you can see when we zoom in, we can actually see the seams okay, on some of the edges of the couch. If we recreate these little details, it will actually make the couch look m that much nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and recreate some of these seams. Okay? So once I make a small little chamfer, I'm going to hit apply to make a second chamfer to sharpen this up basically. 
and 0 0.01 is too much. So if I take Nerm's toggle off, you can see that chamfer is a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually just type in 0 0.05, so 0 0.005, and that's going to give me a smaller chamfer. Uh, might be a little bit too big, however, so let me make the chamfer even smaller. Let me try 0 0 0.02. That's pretty good. So I'm going to hit OK. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to polygon mode, select two polygons right there, grab the loop, I'm going to go to extrude by local normal. Obviously the extrusion is too much, so I'm going to make it a very small extrusion. Uh, point 0.1, let me turn on my NERMS toggle and look at this from a distance. And you can see that we have a little detail there that looks kind of like a, kind of like a seam or something right there. The seam is a little bit on the inside, should have probably been more on the edge, uh, but that's okay. As long as you get the idea of um, of what we're doing here, that's really what counts. So for demonstration purposes, and just to speed this up, I'm going to say I'm happy with that. And um, let me turn off my nerves toggle. So just by doing a small extrusion like that, you can create yourself something that looks from a distance like uh, like a little seam. And if you wanted to, you could even detail that more. If you wanted to, you could take this edge, get the ring, you could connect this maybe a couple of times and pinch that. You could hit OK. Then you could take a couple of polygons that are in here, like that. You can select their loop. And then you could do another extrude, but this time push the extrude inward. And when you do a NERMS toggle of that, you can see how from a distance it looks pretty detailed. So I'm going to go with that. I kind of like that. Looks pretty cool. Okay, let me turn my nerves toggle off. And let me see. I'm probably going to make the other seam run right about... Yeah, this corner looks pretty good. So I'm going to select that edge right there. I'm going to control click on... Let me see which edge. I think it's this edge right there. Okay. By selecting those two edges, what I can do is I can come up here to my Modify Selection and I can select the Step Loop uh, option down here. And it'll basically create, select all the edges in between that loop at the shortest distance. Okay. So again, same deal. I'm going to go ahead and use the Chamfer tool here. I'm going to go with, uh, I believe before I used point 0.1. Okay. I'm going to hit Apply. And then I'm going to go with point zero two and no, that looks pretty good I'll hit OK select the two polygons there in the middle get their loop extrude this to a positive point zero one I'm gonna hit um, hit OK and I'm gonna select that little middle edge right there a little bit hard to select so let me zoom in here there we go. Get that ring. Going to connect that two times with a little bit of pinch. Hit OK. Try to select those two polygons right there. Get the loop. Should select the correct ones. And it does. I'm going to extrude. This time I'm going to put a negative symbol in front so it extrudes it in. Hit OK. Turn on my nerves toggle. And we've got something like this. Okay, so if you really take your time, uh, much more than I am, I'm just kind of speeding through this, but if you take your time to do this right, you can get yourself some pretty nice seams and furniture, and uh, it really adds a nice level of detail. Look at that. That uh, that looks a lot better. looks more realistic. Your eyes kind of buy into it a lot more, okay? And with a texture and with a nice material of leather on top of this, um, it'll look perfect. It'll look awesome. Okay, so now that I showed you how to do it, Go ahead and take the time to do it to the rest of the furniture. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video here so you can see what I do. But I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to go through it, fly through it, and get it done. You've already seen the technique, so just keep reusing the same technique to create the rest of the seams on the furniture.
Okay. Now for here, uh, things have to be a little bit different. Let me go ahead and isolate selection on the front piece over here. See, we have this uh, geometry right in here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and... <coughs> Sorry about that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and see how many iterations I'm going to need for this guy. Probably go for about one. If we look at the image, we have sort of these seams here right down the middle and one here. So basically, we're going to have one here where we're going to symmetrize this guy. And we haven't symmetrized it yet, so we can't make that seam. But we can make the seam that goes in between over here. All right. So this is how I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get that done. Let me see here. In terms of iterations, I'm going to go for about maybe one iteration. It's going to work out uh, good enough here. So I'll collapse this, convert it back to an editable poly. Now I've got myself some edge loops here to work with. Uh, this one here, but you can see it's all curved and funny looking because of the turbo smooth. So it's not perfectly straight. I need it to be perfectly straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that edge loop right there. I'm also going to take the edge loop here in the bottom right there, okay? Now if these two edge loops selected, what I can do is I can align these in the Y. So I'm going to come up here to my align tools, align that in the Y so it straightens them out perfectly. See that? All right. Now I'm just going to eyeball this and kind of choose the middle because it's got to go right in the middle. So basically what we have is this and it's got to go right there in between. So that looks like it's pretty close to the middle. Maybe I'll move it a little bit more to the right. I'm going to say I'm happy with that. I'm not going to fiddle around with that too much. I think you get the idea. Okay, and at this point, I'll just go ahead and um, chamfer this. Obviously, that's way too much. Chamfer a pretty small amount. Deselected the edges there by accident. Okay, so maybe about this amount is pretty good. 0.2. Probably be good. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm happy with that. So I'll hit apply. Make a smaller chamfer here. 0.1 is too little, so I'm going to go with, uh, 0 0.5 here. 0 0.5 looks looks pretty decent. So I'm going to hit it OK. Go to Polygon Select Mode. Select those two polygons and these two polygons here. I'm going to select their loop. Extrude. Same deal as before. Local Normal. Pull the extrusion down. Gonna take it to about 0 0.01. It's gonna look pretty good. So I'm gonna hit um, OK. Now I'll select the middle edge there for both of these. Select the rings. Gonna connect that twice. Now I'll give it as much pinch as you like. I'm gonna just leave it like that. It's pretty good. It's back to polygon mode. Select two polygons there. And select two polygons there. Get the loop, extrude this, put a negative symbol in front so it extrudes it in, hit OK. Activate my NURMS toggle, look at this from a distance, and it looks a little bit funny. The seam looks good, but you can notice that there's this strange kind of lift right near the seam. Okay, That's because we need more geometry there. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create some more geometry. So to do that pretty easily, I'm just going to go to edge mode. And let me see if I can zoom in here as close as possible. And this edge right here is not enough to hold the shape of the geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both edge loops on both sides there. And I'm going to chamfer that by a little bit here. That's too much. And this is I'm going to lower that to about 0 .005. Looks pretty good. I'm going to draw my NURMS toggle. And there we go, we pretty much got rid of that problem right there. See the top is fixed. Looks kind of like the image too, the reference image. The bottom needs to be fixed as well. So it's a very subtle detail that when viewed from far away, it's a little bit hard to see, but that's what we want. We want that kind of uh, realism. Unless you invite somebody into your virtual house that has eagle eyes and can spot uh, like a little speck of dust from, you know, 50 yards away. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK with that. Let's toggle. 
and I messed up the top and I'll tell you why I messed up the top simple user error forgot to hit apply after I had chamfer that oops happens go back to chamfer still has my old settings I hit ok there we go problem solved there we go that looks pretty cool very subtle small detail but it does make a difference from a good distance away even from not that far away it does look like a little seam look at that in the fabric awesome okay let me turn off Nerm's toggle for that. All right, now let me show you how to create the detail for the cushions. Because if we look at the reference images, we can see that the cushions don't have the same type of seam as the furniture, as the sofa. They instead have this kind of like little cord that runs along the edge. I really don't know what that's called. Um, I'm sure some interior designers out there know what that's called. Sorry for not knowing. I think that's called piping or something like that. I don't know. Uh, really doesn't matter. As long as we can recreate in 3D, that's the important thing. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the uh, seat cushion here. I'm going to show you how to do it here. Once I show you how to do it here, I'll let you do it on your own on the top one up here. Uh, it'll be pretty easy to do. So, Turbo Smooth over here. How many iterations? I'm going to go with about maybe two iterations. It's probably going to be pretty good. Yeah, I'll go with two. I'm going to collapse that, convert it back to an editable poly. Okay, so now we can work with something here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this uh, this edge loop that's here. I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm probably going to grab that edge loop that's right there. I'm going to grab those edge loops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer that by a very small amount. Uh, maybe about you know what 0 0.02 is looks like it's gonna be a pretty good size I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, I'm gonna hit apply I'm gonna hit apply and I'm gonna give this a smaller chamfer probably 0 0.5 is gonna work out good um, yeah that's probably gonna work out fine I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and I'm gonna choose the center polygons those two right there I'm going to grab their loop. I'm going to extrude this by local normal. Very similar to the seams with just some very subtle small differences. I'm going to give it an extrusion height of about 0 0.01. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to extrude this out a little bit more. So maybe about 0 0.08. Let me turn on my Nerm's toggle. Bring that out. Um, that actually doesn't look too bad. Looks like it's coming out a little bit too much though, so let me reduce that by a bit. Something like that. See that? Now we have this sort of uh, cord or this round type of detail that goes along the edges there, which looks pretty cool. So I'm going to go for about 0 0.02. Subtle is always better. When you look at this from a distance, it uh, looks pretty good. Okay, now that you saw how to do that, go ahead and follow the same procedure for this one up here. I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I'm going to fast forward through the video and I'll, uh, I'll meet you at the end of this.
Okay, so you can see I got the same detail here on the uh, cushion there. All right. Okay, so that is pretty much uh, done right there. All right. Now, next thing you might want to do, just as an added little plus here for our cushions, if we render this out, they look nice, but uh, they're a little bit too uniform. They look a little bit too planned and just totally brand new. Okay. Um, what you might want to do, you might want to take, what you might want to do here is you may want to take a moment or actually a pretty good time here detailing this stuff out. Now we've already seen how to use the uh, paint deform tools like the noise brush, the pinch and spread, push and pull, stuff like that to basically create some kind of random extra detail to this and just make it look more natural. Just like the drapes, the curtains that we did previously, um, this is an organic type of object that uh, has wrinkles, usually is not perfect, it's kind of uh, has indentations and just an ununiform surface. So you may want to take something like the uh, noise brush here and just reduce the size of that and just take some time to add a little more detail to this if you want. Really depends on you how much time you have, how much time you want to invest on something like this. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and spend time doing that here, at least not in the video. I may take some time out between videos and add a little bit of detail. Uh, but that's pretty much going to do it for this video.